What's going on, guys? I want to pause the podcast for a minute just to bring you guys our sponsor, which is Merrick Health. But they're not only my sponsor, they are definitely the ones that help me keep my health right. And one of the things that sometimes gets lost in the podcast, we joke around a lot about health and drugs and all these different things, but I need to stress to you how important it is to actually see the people at Merrick Health to get your blood work, but not only to get your blood work, but also to optimize your hormones. So look, I'm not going to take a long time. We'll get back to the podcast but trust me, get to MerrickHealth.com forward slash RBP. Don't worry about using my code if you don't want to. It doesn't matter. Just get to Merrick Health. Get somebody to look at your blood work. Get somebody to look at the drugs you're using and your hormones and make sure that you're doing things properly because these things can lead to symptoms and issues down the road. Things that I didn't know about, things that doctors never told me about, and things that I'm dealing with now that I didn't have to deal with had I had the information. So please, get to MerrickHealth.com. A lot of the jokes are all fun and games, but you do have to take these things seriously because bodybuilding is a risky world and it's important for you guys to make sure you're getting checked. MerrickHealth.com is the people to go see. I'm doing good, man. Do you always wear the Olympia jacket or is it just for the podcast? No, I'm always wearing it. You see, <laughs> you see this little dirt here? <laughs> you just keep it on all the time? I wear it with pride, you know. <laughs> How are you, man? How you been? I haven't talked to you in a little while. Before we start this, bro, what? what you, you killed us with the show. Yeah, I mean, thank you. I'm here in Germany and I get so much good uh, resume from the show. I mean, with all the stuff, the backdrop, the organization, man. Thank I you. sent you a message afterwards, but they yeah, are props to you. Yeah, I gonna I gonna see this one soon at a tier one show, at least. Yeah. Well, hopefully next year. I don't want to. I don't want to speak for the guys because we have a lot of plans, and I, I don't like to. I don't like to make any plans without them uh, involved, but hopefully I'll have Classic next year. If you put on 25K for Classic as well, I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You didn't say that before. You just said you said you would do it. You didn't say you didn't say it had to be 25 grand. Can we do 15? No. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy and I'm in it. And 50 20. open. 20. But 20. I think we can do 20. I mean, look. I mean, Sean Ray can do 20. Uh, did he? Yeah. Uh, Hawaii Classic was, I think, it was 15 for Classic and 10 for the best posing. So you could do 30 and 10 for best posing and then I'm in it. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. What was what was Sean Ray? Sean Ray was 15 for the vic best. for winning? Yeah, for winning. And then he did how much for best poser? 10k so 25 total and then what about was that did he have open men's bodybuilding no i don't think so it oh was just, well that's yeah. why <laughs> that's where yeah. <laughs> that's a little yeah. different um true, true no i think we always want to be a bodybuilding show um but i don't know how fast we're going to grow it i don't know if we're going to do like one class extra every year if we're going to add like wellness and bikini next year we've we've kind of batted around a lot of different ideas um personally overall, it was great i mean yeah everything the lightning you killed it with this and it was the first show and normally with the first one there always happen mistakes and everything but well this... i'll tell you or we've been doing this me and paul have been doing this for 15 years now yeah and <clears throat> it's the same way we run our other shows so yeah. like our, our our show in toronto it's out just outside toronto it's called oakville but our show in Toronto and uh, our show in here in Windsor are run in theaters with the same backdrop and the same everything. So like, it no. kind of we kind of just really added a class. What Hello, is this, what is this background? You got a microphone and shit. This is different. That's the professional setup. Yeah, but now he can't log in. He just he can't even hear us. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Look at. Do you like his hair, Urs? Yeah, it's grown pretty quickly. Uh, I, it says connecting, Ian. One minute. 
takes his time. Not no, it didn't connect. <laughs> anyway, um, so what's well, next for you? What's next for you? Not much. I mean, I'm focusing on, on Olympia, one hundred percent. You have nothing else in between now and then. Nah, just some guest appearances. Report. Some guest appearances. Uh, where? Maybe. Yeah. Where? Where? I don't know. There are some big guys on the stage, and I don't. Oh no! For real? Anymore? It was. It's gonna be the first. Are you gonna be there? A mixture. Hell yeah! Are we allowed to? Are we allowed to say this, Ian? Or can you? Can you hear us yet? No, he can't. <laughs> He's trying to get Melissa to fix it for him. Um, can we announce this here? Bro, on your podcast, we always announce, announce crazy shit when I, when, when I, when I remember it right. <laughs> uh, the, but yeah, so, we can. I so mean, you're... I messaged Tyler, I'm going to be there. And he said like, hell yeah, that's nice. And at least there need to be one more guy than, than Chris for Classic because Chris is just talking, you know. Can you guys hear me now? <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. you. Yeah. But I don't see you. There we go. Oh, hey. Hey, Fu, I don't like you now. How do you like this? <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> do I sound amazing now? You do, sound, you do sound amazing. <laughs> you should start those ASMRs. <laughs> you don't have yeah. to do that. You can just you can just stay there. <laughs> like my microphone. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What is this? You're like, I want to be more professional, so you got a mic? Well, it's like it's during the day, so I didn't want to be like up in my like main living room. Usually, Melissa's sleeping, oh. so I'm downstairs and where like she filmed her podcast with Courtney. Yeah, well, you sound way better. Yeah, I got a real yeah. mic here. You see this bad boy? Yeah, nice. yeah. We all now, have... now you can cut us off even, even better. Cloud even lower. Yeah, <laughs> even more clear and concisely. Yeah. Even more clearly, you can talk above everybody. Yeah. But this mic should help so much. That's crazy. Yeah. <clears throat> listening to the podcast of you guys it's day and night so, different. so ian did you hear the good news i did not urs is uh going to be guest closing <laughs> guest closing in pittsburgh really yeah well we're definitely going down now me and me me and ian are even now. <laughs> me and ian are coming yeah yeah me ian uh john de la rosa and ben and Paul. and Paul and Paul we're gonna ride down there on our motorcycles oh nice yeah so yeah. we're gonna we're gonna start in Detroit and then ride to Pittsburgh it's like a four or five hour drive yeah I gotta ride. I gotta ask you about that can I ask some quick questions about that I don't care yeah, cool. um is your wife gonna be home that weekend yes is can Melissa drive up with me and hang out with Summer while we're there and then we drive back and she comes back with me I'm sure Summer would love it Okay, just because it's either that or I fly because I ain't driving eight hours each way by myself. No, I'm sure summer. <laughs> I'm sure summer would love to have her here. Okay, cool. Yeah, do you have a license for for motorcycle? Who? You? So yes. Yes. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> so <sorry. laughs> no, that's great. Well, the nice thing is Paul's gonna Paul doesn't have a motorcycle license, but he'll be riding. He's gonna drive my Cadillac with the trailer attached to it, and he's gonna follow us. So but in the US, you don't need one. It's just straight everywhere. Well, just yeah, highway. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so if I get pulled over, even though I do have my license, but by by chance, let's say, then at least we'll just put it in the trailer with Paul. You know. Yeah, we can just put it. Yeah, and then we'll be fine. Anyway, yeah. so Urs is guest posing uh, with Chris. I hope so. I don't. Is Chris guest posing? I don't think Chris is posing, but maybe oh. I can make him posing. We will so, see. I mean, I said this on the last podcast that so we got to. Chris is showing up at all these Pittsburgh pros. He's got to get on stage. Come on, man. So yeah. Chris, but Chris is going to be there, but we don't know if he's posing. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, okay. Well, I think if you get up there, or maybe you can talk about. I'm honestly surprised he's even going to be there because I mean, Courtney will have given birth like any day now. So I mean, he's going to be real close right after. Yeah, yeah. He can jump out for a couple of days though. Young babies are they just kind of sleep and shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if uh, if Courtney's gonna be okay with that, but I guess he's still got to work. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yo, okay, turn your phone guy. sideways. Oh, sideways. There you go. There 
Chad, there he is, the man What's of the up, hour. Boys? How are you, man? Good, man. Really good. The first Bears time, on. First time on the podcast, the victor of the Detroit Pro. How are you, man? Awesome, guys. It couldn't be better, honestly. Uh, Martin, how long have you been a pro now? Two years? Three years? Um, I won it my card in 2020, so I guess it'd be like around around four. And this is your first pro win, right? Yep. 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 Fifth fifth pro show, first pro win. That's fucking. How old are you? 27. Fuck man, that's awesome. You're getting a career started early with your first fucking yes. pro win. Is this this is your first time at the Olympia, correct? Yep. Yep. All right. So, what is? Explain to me how this all progressed because I know you took a year off yeah um what was the last show before you took a year off was it france or was it the arnold uk i don't remember which one you did arnold uk so i did texas pro got second to andrew then uh four weeks later we did the arnold uk ended up getting fourth over there Mm -hmm. um with a pretty stacked lineup i think it was uh andrew Andrew james yeah yeah, Andrew won. Then I think Patrick Johnson got second. Yeah, James was there and, too. Yep, and then James got third, and then me. Um, and yeah, it was honestly, man, it was just like I just needed to fill in some gaps. My chest was still a little bit too small. My arms were still pretty sm- Like my arms were actually significantly smaller than they are now. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, and then just some maturity, you know. Like I wanted to take some time off from the stage in general and just grow up overall in general like as a person away from the stage and as a bodybuilder and you know progress my physique so took it really came out to be about 18 months away from stage um so can i I, martin sorry to interrupt you can i ask you who did you work with for the arnold uk coaching wise uh branch and i like were a collaboration team so we worked together he ran my diet pretty much and my training Mm -hmm. um and i did my protocol and stuff like that so it was it was cool man uh we we killed it over there we got me in the best shape of my life probably Mm -hmm. um i was a a touch flat for the peaking of that show um but it was it was awesome man like i really enjoyed my look over there i had a great time um the experience was awesome getting to meet the fans in the uk and stuff um and then it was just like what do i need to do to make it to the olympia and like like actually do damage when i get there like i don't just want to make it you know so branch and i both sat down and was like it's just just take a matter of time and and balance things out and like fill in these gaps so i took I coached myself in the off season and um, I took like probably like eight months or so. Mm. And then I kind of was like at a, at a wall where I knew that I wanted someone to prep me and do a really good job and somebody that I could trust. And, and uh, so I actually reached out to Uris and um, asked him, you know, I said, Hey, would you, uh, would you think, the boss would take me on and he said absolutely um and so, st- so martin sorry to interrupt sorry to interrupt yeah, yeah just uh so the eight months you coach yourself yep how much progress did you make in that eight months like were you were you putting on a lot of size did you feel like you were excelling did you feel like those were a, a solid productive eight months uh, absolutely yeah so i was um i had got up to my biggest i was like around 270 um if you if we went back and looked at pictures if you go look at the last part of where i was coaching myself was like right when i went to dubai yeah um and i I was my biggest there and i looked really awesome man i was super strong um training was going awesome everything was going really well it was just i knew that coming up like i didn't want to prep myself yeah i wanted to be able to kind of hand the reins over to somebody that i trust and just be able to just like have fun and just be a bodybuilder and just follow the plan, you know? Um, and I know I watched that with Uris. Yeah. Um, and so go ahead. Why why did you, why did you, what made you think of boss? When we say boss, we're talking about Stefan. What's Stefan's last name? I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. (laughs) Boss of outlaw on Instagram. (laughs) Uh, Stefan, can I ask? Yeah. What he said, I'm not going to try to repeat it. (laughs) Wait, you guys have talked to him recently. I just want to know before you go on, Martin, 
Is he still growing his hair out? Because he still owes me like one more month, I think. Yeah. He is. He showed up. <laughs> listen, he showed up at the, the FIBO. He had to hold a seminar on the stage. No way. <laughs> you know, he's, he's totally afraid of people. He he don't yeah. want to be out on this social thing. Yeah. And he was there on stage together with me. We're doing the seminar. And he was wearing a hat like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, Next stage, the- I ran into his wife and she said like, if I found Fuad, I'm going to kill him for this. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey. so for, the, for those people who don't know, I made uh, Stefan a bet uh, for the Arnolds. I said that James would be in the top five. And Stefan said he wouldn't. And James came through for me. And the bet nice. was that the bet was that he had to grow his hair out for three months. And he's got like, for those who don't know, Stefan's got like a completely like losing all his hair. He's just got like a <laughs> he shaves he shaves his head like, like I the do. rest he, of us. Like I do, yeah. <laughs> so when he grows it in, it just looks horrible. So it was a it was a good bet on my part. But anyway, so um I gotta get him on the funny. podcast so I can see what it looks like. I gotta make sure he does it without a hat. Yeah. Anyway, so so what made you, I know like last year, there's a lot of rumblings about Ur's do it, working with them and Nathan was working with them, doing well. Wesley. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I never heard too much about Wesley until after the Arnold. I'm talking no, sorry. About, yeah. That was after the yeah, Arnold we yeah. really heard. Wesley but, picked up the buzz after that. After but the Arnold. but yeah. early, but early on, Nathan, I think was the talk amongst the bodybuilders working with Stefan, but maybe you heard something different. What was, what was your reasoning, Martin, for reaching out to Ur's about Stefan? So actually it was the Arnold UK. Um, so when I was over there and um, in between prejudging and finals, like I, I've never met somebody so passionate about bodybuilding, man. Like Stefan, mm-hmm. like, like I always said that there was nobody that loved bodybuilding more than me. Um, but I think that Stefan actually does. So I, I don't think I can argue it anymore. Yeah. Um, but no. So uh, in between prejudging and finals over there, like he came to me and he was like, if you do this, this, and this, like, you're going to look so good tonight. Like you look incredible. And he was like, he told me too, like, you have remnants of Phil Heath from the back. Like, I love your physique. And I think you can like go all the way. And he just like, he just breathed so much passion into me in that moment. Um, that I, I, it was kind of in the back of my head for a long time. Yeah. Um, yeah. and then, um, you know, I've seen yours just progress like absolute wildfire and um you know yours and i've been friends since around that 2020 time frame when i went when we went pro sure. and uh just watched him kick butt and take names you know so i've been seeing it happen and then i watched what he did with nathan and nathan and i are real good friends um so i also reached out to nathan and i said like hey man what do you think of this and uh at first he was like fuck off i don't want you to work with stefan because you'll be too good (laughs) he was like he's too smart he'll make you too good and i was like all right well then that means i'm texting him right now (laughs) so Uh, so you reached out and he was good to go and that was how far from detroit that was in october so i don't know like how many months out that would have been but it was it was a a good bit of time so six or seven months so you yeah, had about six months with him. So you still had a little bit of off season time left. How long was your diet yep. for? Yep. Um, well, really, man, <laughs> like I'm super gifted. So we got to keep my food like super high and really only had to push like the last couple of weeks to really get me dug out, you know? Um, but so- with him, like I did no cardio this prep. We did like 600 carbs on training 600 carbs on training day and like 400 on off days until the like last four weeks and then we kind of dropped the hammer and then the last two weeks i was like let's just see how dug out we can get so we kind of pushed pretty low then um like i was doing like 150 on off days and like 300 on training days okay can i ask you Um, i'm gonna get i'm gonna get ours on or not, or sorry, um, I'm going to get Stefan on to like dig into this like in detail, but just to ask you, so no cardio, 600 grams of carbs. I always know there's got to be a catch somewhere. Are you doing like zero fat? No, like, how- no, he actually had me doing fats with almost every single meal. What kind of fats were you having with every meal? Uh, just like low, lower fats, but just like a little bit of almond butter or yeah. like a little bit of avocado with every meal. Okay. And then your protein must've been low then, right? 
Yeah, protein is d- decently lower than I've ever had it before, actually. Yeah, for so, sure. So where was your protein number at? Like, were you eating like six ounces of meat per meal or like four ounces or like, or I don't know if you do it in grams. Uh, uh, sorry. Right around, it was like, it's right around five, I think, cooked. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that's yeah. low. That's like four ounces raw. Yeah, yeah. So I was, I was like, b- before I worked with him, I was doing like eight ounces cooked. Yeah, I was I was doing more like a Ronnie Branch, yeah, style. Um, and and he took my protein down, up to my carbs, uh, up to my fats. My fats were my fats were lower when I was running yeah. higher protein. Right, right. Um, right. and then and then yeah, I've always been a low cardio guy. I've so, always been like I've never done more than like twenty minutes in a prep. So, so this is just we just made training hard man, I'm training with Brett every day. So we just whip each other's ass. Mm -hmm. And, and then I pose twice a day. So I come in in the morning, I do a couple rounds, uh, somewhere between three to five rounds. And then after training, Brett poses me pretty hard every day. So Urs, is that similar? Like, I I know coaches have like their philosophy. I know they don't do cookie cutter across the board, but their philosophy is usually goes from one athlete to another. So Urs, when you're working with Stefan, is it also low protein like that? Or are you doing something totally different? No, the pro- protein wise, it's the same, but in all other points, it's totally different. I mean, <laughs> I have to do my, <laughs> my daily cardio. I have to do my, uh, keep my, my, um, low days very low. And, um, yeah, I had like two refeeds or something in the 16 weeks prep. So yeah, that much and uh, yeah it's always everybody's different and Stefan don't goes um with everything with everybody over the same diet and the same approach so yeah um it's crazy to hear that Martin gets fats in every meal because I just get fats like in the morning one whole <laughs> egg, evening like 30 grams of almond butter so yeah but you're, mad, you're, they- mad. <laughs> you're gonna have a talk with you're gonna have a talk with <laughs> Stefan now like, yeah. what the fuck, bro? <laughs> yeah, bro but this bro. is this is this is a good example of like a coach knowing what an athlete needs to get the best out of them you know i mean yeah. you know it's not like you know they could have their right. style and like you know like and it sounds very similar to patrick in that aspect as well when i worked him with a bit on the lower protein side um you know keeping the carbs a little higher to keep you know training energy and stuff like that on the, on the higher side because obviously you know how you guys train how i train like you need those carbs in some aspect to support that level yeah. of training right 100 uh, percent so, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's cool to see that, you know, you have one coach with two athletes, but the system is completely different, you know, right, like right. one guy doing lots of cardio, you know, maybe less carbs, more fats, whatever one guy doing, you know, more fats, more carbs, you know? So it's kind of cool to see the, uh, you know, his brain at work and being like, all right, what do we need to get the most out of this athlete? Right. Um, watching that ha- Sorry for, I'm not, no, no, go ahead. Off, no, no, but, go ahead. But watching him learn my body in the beginning. So like, when I handed the reins over, I'm just like, all right, whatever. Like, you just do your thing. And then, like, he sent me the diet, and I was like, holy shit. Like, the, bro, the protein, what the hell? Like, it's yeah. so low. Yeah. Like, you you scared me. That's what happened to um, me. That's what would have happened to me if I saw it. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. Was the and and I, Patrick, yeah. I was just like, all right, like, I trust you. But, like, at first, he cut my food really low because I had a bunch of junk shit in there, man. Like, I was eating cereal and stuff and, like just silly stuff so he cut like some calories and like it within like two three days he was like oh shit okay um your metabolism is absolutely insane like i see this now like we can actually leave food way higher than i thought we can and like yeah it it was like i could watch him every like three days like learn my body faster and faster like it was awesome to see man so that's so stefan when he stefan works with you or in the beginning or uh martin in the beginning is it kind of the same like he's making these small adjustments throughout just to kind of like how long did it take stefan or how long did it take him to learn your body and like get you to the system where you're at now i mean we still learning together so i think um the first, it's crazy because I turned pro in 2019 and he was my first like coach, I would say, my like normal coach. And uh, before that, I got some tips here and there, but nothing really, yeah, locked in. Uh, so I, I learned from him from the beginning on and uh, he, he learned my body and everything what comes with it. So 
Um, but I, I guess what I'm asking Urs though is like <clears throat> the low protein, the no fat, the like making sure you do enough cardio. Like, did he kind of figure that out right away, or was it a symptom of like a year or two? Because like the reason I'm asking is you get a lot of guys that'll hire a coach and they expect them to know their body right away. Right. And maybe oh. and, and maybe some coaches do and some coaches don't. So I'm just asking, like, was Stefan on that type of system right away or did it take him time to figure out that's what you needed? It took some time, but I would say it was pretty fast because he's, I mean, he's coaching, I don't know how many thousands or hundred pros around the world. I mean, in every time zone, it's crazy. He's yeah. on the phone all day. I mean, I told about FIBO, the seminar. I was backstage there, Martin. I sent you the photo. It's the selfie yeah. from us. Yeah. It was backstage <laughs> before the seminar, and he was walking on this fucking stage and sending you like the you ask about the, the coffee, right? Four ounces yeah. of coffee. I remember. Yeah. That's and he, <laughs> I mean, he he lives for it. And um from this experience, I think he yeah, he knew pretty pretty fast what's going on with my type of body and everything. And with that, oh, it's always like I'm in classic, you know, so we have the weight cut and the weight limit. And yeah, that's also another thing he can do pretty good because, yeah, he knows exactly what to he needs to manipulate to to be like 0.3 below the weight. I mean, every time I wake up on on uh, on, on weight in day, he's giving me the right exact number what my weight is. And without I'm telling him, you know, so that's that's pretty crazy all the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So Ian, when you worked with Patrick, mm -hmm. I know you guys are a little lower, but this this like what Martin's talking about reminds me of like a George Farah type of diet. You weren't that low, were you? No, I mean I think for most of the time we'd be probably like the 170 to 190 grams raw. So I don't know what that sorry, what, what is that? What does that announce? Is do you know? <laughs> I'm old. I'm, I'm old school. I don't do. It. <laughs> so what do you? And, mine, mine are 150 raw. Yeah. So it's like 130 cooked. Yeah. So one 170 is six ounces exactly. So I would be in the six to seven ounce range raw, in the raw, raw in a raw measure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So so it's probably like five cooked right yeah, around there. Five, about Somewhere. five cooked. So yeah, I'd be a, that a, is you know, low. A, yeah, that's low. A little higher, you know, but. I weigh a tiny bit more than Martin. So, I mean, yep. that would that would make about sense, you know? Okay. Um, and then, and then, yeah, like the higher carbs and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. I mm -hmm. like this. I like this for one second. So well, you Martin, know what? that's why I sorry to interrupt, but that's why Ian and Martin are peeled inside out because they go with, okay, the wait, grams. wait, 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 time the grams, <laughs> like <laughs> European coaches, <laughs> <laughs> the European <laughs> accuracy Fuad's like, ah, one ounce yeah. here and there. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, listen, I got, I got well, peeled using ounces you know, too. Fuck you guys. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuad's, Fuad's uh, measuring his oats in like one cup. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I used to, you know, what's funny. We did, we did, we never, that's not like this whole, like, measure. I know. when I see people measuring their uh, teaspoon of peanut butter, I laugh and I'm not saying it's wrong. You should be measuring your teaspoon of te peanut butter. Cause Obviously, it's like your teaspoon. Can I, I vary. mean, even a teaspoon of like you should be doing it on the scale, really. You I, know? I know, I know that. Listen, I'm not saying oh, anything. Okay. It, yeah. All you guys are doing this shit right. I'm just saying we did things very differently. I know. Like it's crazy. It's crazy because like I've started weighing my food a little bit again, and I was like for the longest time when I was doing my oats, I had just like a scooper in my oats. Yeah, bin. yeah, I was like just a cup in a there. Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then one day I was like, I want to see how accurate this is. One day I scooped out a cup; it was ninety grams. The next day I scooped out a cup; it was one hundred and twenty-five. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. this isn't even close to an accurate system. Yeah. That's know? that's why I liked it because when I was hungry, yeah. I would scoop a little more. <laughs> <a big> scoop. <laughs> still a cup. <laughs> Listen, I still got shredded, so it doesn't matter. Anyway, <laughs> the the interesting thing about this is after uh, you worked with Patrick, you went back to Matt and Matt was like the old school. Like I used to do tw much higher ounce. protein, much higher yeah. protein, lower carbs. Yeah. Yeah. Like super high. Like you're talking like 12 ounces. No, he wasn't quite that high. He was maybe, um, here, I'll do the conversion for you. So you don't get confused again. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this was he, like probably eight cooked, right? Um, he had me doing cooked okay yeah eight, eight to nine ounces cooked yeah nine so ounces, ten ounces so 10 ounces raw yeah yeah we'll call yeah, it 10, 10 ounces, ounces raw so yeah, that's still, like that's 200 still... 250 grams kind of uh cooked so yeah nine ounces okay. uh, cooked weight yeah. but i guess my question is that's still double so you're a perfect experiment here so you've done Not double both. but yeah yeah but close close to double anyway so what you're saying what i'm saying is like you've done both and you kind of did them back to back 
Sure. How did both preps feel? And I know it does. I know it's not always exact because your body oh, changes. That's, blah blah blah. A tough, that's a tough question, man. I'm just saying, like, if you had to do it again, would it? It probably feels better to do lower protein, higher carbs. But what results? Yeah. Like, what do you like better? What do I like better? Yeah, I, pr I probably do like that system, like they are doing it, and, and Patrick did. You know, I, I found my ability to train hard definitely stayed higher, dude. Um, and my, my my attitude and like things like that, like my mental like clarity yeah. and stuff stayed a little better. Yeah. Um, in terms of the end result, I it's hard to say if they were that like that much different. You know, yeah. like at the end of the day, you can get peeled doing both. Like the calories, you know, they're coming from one end or the other. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, but I think I did prefer being able to keep like, I mean, I remember and it's funny because Martin's here. I remember I was like two weeks out from the Arnold Classic once and we were in Florida. I was like deadlifts in seven yeah. plates, with Martin, you know, yeah, like, yeah, I, was, you I wasn't murdering it. Yeah. Like I was doing reps of seven plates like like a week, two weeks out from the Arnold Classic where, yeah. you know, when the protein was a little higher and the carbs were a little lower, you know, I'd get close to a show yeah, and yeah. trying to move like six plates got hard, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So I, I don't think. Like, look, usually when you say like the strength is, is kind of coming down, people correlate that sometimes with like a loss of tissue. I don't think I lost any tissue per se because of it. Um, I think the protein was there to support it. Um, even though the the training, you know, intensity came down. So the strength came down. I think there was enough protein to support the tissue. Um, but it's just like two different sides to the same kind of square. But yeah. like, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, ultimately, if the result at the end is the same. Why would you not want to do a prep that makes you feel better and train sure. better and like have more. And, and I'll be completely honest too. Like if I'm going to eat something just in terms of like what feels good in my stomach, like I don't want to eat 10 ounces of meat. You know? <laughs> like yeah. I don't like yeah. eating a shitload of meat. Like I don't, you know, like I know some guys like I want to eat a lot of meat. I want to have 10 ounces of steak. I'd rather eat like five ounces and eat like fucking 400 grams of rice. You know, yeah, it's, it's funny. I found that way easier to digest. My like energy feels better. Like I find that way more tolerable for sure. It's funny you say that, Ian, because I'm like doing this like ketovore carnivore fucking thing. I'm like, I I realize a lot of my bloat and discomfort comes from carbs. Like if I smash like a 15 ounce steak and I eat the fat like with it, like you know, I'm like I'm totally fine. Like I don't feel yeah. bloat. I don't feel bloated. See, I don't see, feel but anything. I I would say it on the opposite that I would find having more yeah. protein, I would feel more discomfort. So like yeah. this is a prime example of two different people. You right. worked with Chad many times and guys that would do like higher protein, lower carbs, and that might yeah. sit better for you where the three of us, you know, it could right. be different. So yeah. it's one of those things, like there is a million ways to do these things and they can all work. Um, yeah. You need to just do what obviously feels the best and gets the most out of, you know, you, you know, as a person, so, right. And as an athlete. So I will say I, like a training wise, I think you're 1000% right. Because I know like working with Chad, I got shredded, but like, man, you'd be curling dude, five pound dumbbells at the yeah, end. Yeah. There'd be time like, you know, five weeks out where I would like, you know that you, you know that feeling when you you're depleted and you have like the still you have still have the strength for like the first rep and then it's just like yeah weird. it's like you try and curl like a 50 pound dumbbell and you're good for like two reps and then it just drops or off or it's like your first set it's like you dumbbell press like the 150s for 10 and then the second set you do like the yeah. 120s for 4 you know yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so so training wise like i agree with you guys like the carb thing is is definitely better to hold your training at its peak throughout your prep I just wonder why, like, if I eat a large volume of rice, I get super bloated. Whereas if I eat a large volume of any type of protein, yeah, I'm totally fine. Like, you guys don't find like ours. You don't find any bloat with like mass, like bigger, larger amounts of carbs. No, for me it's the opposite. It's the same yeah. like it is with Ian. Really, uh, I get like a super big tomahawk steak for some special occasion or something. I eat it and I feel fucking bloated afterwards and yeah keep the proteins low especially for like the midsection I think it's beneficial and also to come back to Stefan I think uh, we need to say with that he split up the whole protein to seven meals for me I don't okay. know how many you had uh, Martin but I had seven as well yeah so yeah. those meals are like <laughs> Tiny okay, so that honestly, then his protein intake would be almost the same as Patrick's because I would, right. I'm doing like 20, 30 grams more per meal, but I'm doing six, six. meals, maybe with like a post. What the heck is this? Why did you get a thumbs up? <laughs> How did that happen? Does it work when you, you want it to? That was crazy. 
Magician. Uh, but yeah, I would be doing it over six meals, maybe with a post-workout shake. So, okay. you know, yeah. so yeah, I would be, the total would be, yeah, because it'd be, if you did six times, you know, 30, then we're at another 180. We're doing the same amount then if we just mm -hmm. divide it. So, yeah. so yeah, I mean, basically they're doing the exact same. And I have a question for you guys too. Um, with um, Stefan, as the carbs came down in any regard, like say as you get closer to the show and the carbs came down, would you ever taper up the, the protein or anything? Or was the protein like yep. a static number? Yep. He, he would bring my protein up. Okay, oh, so okay. say when the carbs are high, like, you know, at the start of a prep coming out of the off-season, you know, might be 140, 150 grams, and then by the end, you might be like 160, 170 or something? Uh, yeah, at the end, on my on my lower days, where he was like, he would pull, he pulled fats even in mm. the meal, then he would take it to like 200 grams raw. Okay. So, it, yeah. so mm -hmm. it would be like 150 cooked or like 170 cooked, something like that. You know what's um, really you know, what's interesting about that is most coaches I've worked with, uh, whether it be Hani, Chris, Cecito, most Chad, guys should do that. No, no, that's the opposite. Of what I was going to say, really, all the coaches I've worked with have never changed the protein. They only manipulate the carbs and fats. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, I've, I've seen many as, as, especially as, you know, total calories come down, especially what? from carbs and fats that the protein will come up. Yeah. The only I... time that the only time proteins okay. manipulated with the coaches I've worked with is like in your peak in the final, yeah, like two days out and where it's like going down to like a hundred grams a meal. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm talking about earlier on, like Martin, when you're saying he's manipulating protein, are you talking about like the last week or are you talking about like the last few weeks? No, no, no. It was, last it was weeks. like last weeks. four, four weeks. Yeah, or yeah, so. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That would be this. That would be the no. same as Patrick would do. Like say if I started a prep at 170 grams per meal, um, you know, as the carbs came down, you know, depending on how much we push the carbs and fats down, you know, that might work up to 190, 200, 210, you know, depending on kind of where we were at and how much room we had. Um, so yeah, he would definitely increase it as we went. Okay. Well, so so you, I mean, you have to think about it like from a science standpoint, carbs are protein sparing. Yeah. So if you, if you take away carbs, then you actually need to have a little bit more protein I to agree. be yeah. able to replace no, it. Right. So no, we get it. it. Like, like we get that. It's just my, but I think, I think also, sorry to interrupt when you're going with a guy that's doing higher protein, like there's no need to increase cause you're already slightly overshooting right. to begin with. Yeah. I, right. get, I get it. I get it. I, th I think I just, um, the reason I'm asking is because so I understand the science of it and the protein sparing aspect yeah, of the carbs. Yeah. I guess the reason I'm saying that is because the protein usually stays constant because they're trying to peel away calories. Yeah. Right. So right. if you're if you're saying, okay, I'm going to peel your carbs down from 300 grams or from 600 grams to 300 grams. If you then increase the protein, your calories mm -hmm. are going to end up the same because all you did is just move the calories to a different macro. So right. I'm like, so we, it, it, at it, it one does, point, at one point we did do that, but your body composition is just going to change. Right, I had right, a, right. I had a point in prep, bro, where I, I body weight didn't change for a very long time, right. but I was just absolutely recomping because of I, that I that yeah. small little change that we made. I'll yeah. say this, man: the 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 two biggest things I noticed is what Ian is saying is one, I was a fucking animal. Excuse me, an animal. You can swear it's right. all day here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> in training all the way up until the end. Like literally until the last week, I was a beast. Like that's awesome. That our last leg days, Brett was like, What the hell is going on? Like, how are you still moving the weights that you're moving? Like, yeah. and then I was so I was so sore afterwards. Can I but <laughs> can we actually uh, also add to that? Yeah. And Ian, I don't know if you, or Urs, I don't know if you can, well, Urs, you don't have any fats, but I got to, I have to say from my experience with John working with Meadows, that I think the fats had a lot to do with that. Like your strength, your strength at the end yeah, yeah. there and, and feeling good. Like, yeah, I, I think the fats, I think honestly, the only thing, and this is like such a weird, tangible thing to notice. The biggest thing I noticed with keeping more fats in is like my sex drive stayed better. Like in terms of like, if I would cut my fats down to like zero, yes. like, I would, I literally had like zero dick brain at all where like, if my fats were still yeah. high by the end, no, like my set, my sex drive almost didn't change at all. You know? So, <laughs> so, uh, or, that, so or is basically you're not fucking at all for your whole part. <laughs> <laughs> Urs so, is done 12 weeks out. Yeah. I was, I was going to say the, the other thing I noticed, I mean, it, sex drive too, but in general is that having those fats, I was not, I'm not near as crazy. That's yeah. like, yeah. I, 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 I yeah. Like honestly, like I like you take away all your fats, bro. Like it kind of makes you psycho. Yeah. I always felt like and, with with John having all those fats because he used to add fats to every meal. 
yeah. my yeah. overall my overall sense of well being, my feeling in the gym, like yeah. everything I think, felt better. I think when you take the fats too, like your feeling of like satiate satiety. How do you satiety. say satiety? Satiety. Yeah. Satiety. yeah. Yeah. Um, is going to, is going to drop down a lot too, you know? Yeah. So yeah. obviously like those meals are going to run through you a little quicker, you know? So then I think when people are like in that state of like, kind of like alert hunger all the time, that's when you start to go a little fucking wacky, you know? Yeah. And, and that was one thing, even when he did start pulling some fats there at the end, like out of some meals, um, he would keep like my fats before bed, you know, yeah. keep, keep, keep some eggs in there before bed or keep some nut butter in there before bed to make sure that I'm, I'm a little it, holding food a little bit longer, making sure that I'm sleeping through the night. All, he's, he's taking in all those things into so, consideration. He's a, I mean, he's absolute genius, man. Martin, can I ask you this? So because he's adding a little bit of fat to every meal, is your protein, are your protein sources higher in fat? Like, are you doing beef? Or are you doing fish and that chicken? No. Like, no, I we did not do any beef this prep. That's what is, I that's, figured. So he's getting the, the fat. Biggest change yeah. for me probably out of all the things was like I didn't have one beef meal unless he would say like uh, uh, we did this a lot, but like he would just be like, "Go get some cheats." Go and yeah. eat. Them. <laughs> yeah, just go cool. eat, and then like send me pictures, and I'd be like, "Okay, what do you want me to eat?" And he would be like, "Uh." Ah, whatever and i'd be like oh that's a disaster um, for me at this moment yeah, once that's, that's a that's a <laughs> so accident then, no, that's an accident waiting to happen for fuad right there <laughs> so that's a, the funny thing is is like i'm not like that at all you know so i'm like i'm like calculated to the t i'm like so i got five guys it was this burger i weighed my fries this is about how much fries i had <laughs> like, holy fuck who <laughs> would come who had we would come back the next day being like 17 pounds heavier. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. time out, time out, time out. <laughs> I got we had we need to explain something. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, okay, sure. Yeah. I, I did that. Not yeah. weight. I didn't weigh my shit. Fuck that. But I did that where I was like, okay, I'm gonna go. I remember working with Chris Acido and I'm like, I'm gonna go have he's like, go have a burger and fries. I'm like, all right, go have a burger and fries. It didn't do shit to me. Like, I don't know, Ian, okay. you were you were 305 at one point. <laughs> a burger and fries just did not like one burger, one fry didn't right. change right my, did no not, no you're right and, and in not. the early years when i worked like when i was really like making good progress and younger like when i was with dennis when i first turned pro and then matt the first few years when they would send me for a cheat it wouldn't be like it, it would be like that it would be like just go you know go eat sushi and just like eat till you're fucking done you know yeah, like yeah yeah. yeah yeah because i just because i would go the next day and chris would say to me how was your training today and i'm like it wasn't Same. really that different because it's like when you weigh Right, right. Two hundred when you weigh two sixty on stage, it's barely one, an influx. Yeah, yeah, like one burger, one fry doesn't do anything. Right, no, because it's like a thousand so, calorie meal, and your regular meal is seven hundred anyways. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So I was gonna say, so what he would do is he would tell me like, make sure to eat all seven of your regular meals today. Yeah. Oh, plus that, that one. Get, yeah. Get your eight hundred carbs in that we have yeah. planned, yeah, and yeah. then on top of that, I want you to go get burger and fries also. Yeah, so and it's a guaranteed like, surplus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then and then he, I would send pinchers the next morning, and he might be like, "Okay, do it again." Mm, okay, do it nice. again. Like we might we might have that like three four days in a row. Amazing. And then then he would be like, "Okay, now you're exploding." and let's go like now we're gonna push you hard and then yeah right. yeah then he would then he'd pull some food and we'd run it run it and gun it and then like i i hardly lost any strength this whole prep man like it was this was like it was freaking awesome this was the coolest prep to just it felt like every day was like lining it up to just smack a home run yeah or, then, is there, or is, do you have the same experience like do you does your body react that way where Stefan would give you, you know, a cheat every other day or every day until you were full. <laughs> no, no, no. no, he said earlier he had two. He had yeah. two. Oh, that's, that's right. That's right. I go for yeah. one. Like I go for uh, two hundred fifty grams of uh, raw rice more, and I weigh like five, five. pounds. The next <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> the next two weeks in training, but yeah, I mean, on the other side, it's it's also not bad. I mean, whatever it is. I stick to it. And for me, it's it's better to not refeed on prep. Maybe make you hungrier. Maybe athletes who yeah. listen to yeah. this. You get from this the moment you do the first like refeed or like cheat meal, you start to think about it. Yeah, okay, now I can I try to push myself hard to get this uh, 
this refeed again and then something like this comes to your mind and i don't want to yeah I wanna... you know what you're or is you're right i remember yeah when i was working with chad i would peel off like a quarter cup of rice like yeah. <laughs> from like certain meals i'm like i'm gonna get some of my weight down yeah. and then i get a refeed on sunday i'm like okay yeah. like, no you're totally right about that but yeah. um martin when you're going into peak mm -hmm. i i heard and correct me if i'm wrong I heard you didn't use any diuretics for Detroit. Uh, we ended up using a little bit. We did okay. end up using a little bit. Um, okay. But what we did mostly, man, was just a ton of food and just taper water back. Mm -hmm. um, and then we just wanted to use a touch to just get that exploding fullness. That's, what was, and then saran wrapped. What was the water? What the water manipulation look like? Did it like you start cutting it early? Did you load you like... Did it keep you right till the end? Like, how did the water manipulation look like? Um, so it was like we did like seven to eight liters all the way up until Thursday. Yeah. Um, and then kind of started to taper things back. So Thursday I did six liters. Friday I did five and a half. Saturday we did four. Jesus. And, man. and then the day of the show probably still did. Um about 750 milliliters to a liter somewhere right in there i can't believe how different shit is like i'm like i wish i could compete now because we well know. it's all coaches like look i've done it i you know i did that kind of same thing with patrick and he knows my physique yeah. um, and i also did it with matt you know who knew my physique as well and did it a very different way where he pushed the food way way higher but the food would come way lower you know like so you i mean the you, you mean know. the water you mean the water Sorry, like, yeah, the water. So, like, you know, two days out, maybe I would be, you know, from three days out to two days out to one day out, my water might come down. So I'm just, you know, having like one ounce of water a meal, but I'm eating like 600 grams of rice every meal. You right, know? right, right. So, right, like, right. kind of like, like Hani would do, where he kind of does it like step down at the same time. Like, carbs go up, water comes down, carbs go up, water go down, carbs, you know, kind of does it in like little steps yep. like that. I, yep. yeah. Me, for example, with Stefan, we're doing it at the same way. Like, carbs go up, water goes down. I yeah. mean, like, 10, 10 liters the the whole week up to the show and then we cut down to six then to three and then show the no more water at all so, yeah see that's yeah. more that's more what i'm like closer yeah. to what i'm used to so I, mean, I have I, I think part of that sorry yours to cut you off but i think part of that is just because of how much carbs we were doing we have enough water to soak it up right so like mm -hmm. uh thursday i got in off the plane we did like 700 after that. So from noon until bed, I got 700 carbs in. Then wake up, I dropped like two pounds. W wake up, again, water comes down and we put in 1,200 carbs. Mm. So then we ended up waking up like 0.2 of a pound down again. But I'm just, you know, way fuller, way harder, but drier. And then the next day we go to four liters and do like 1400 carbs. So then again, you know, hundred carbs. Holy fuck. Yeah. So, so in a, in a three day period of time, I, I was almost about f like 4,000 carbs. Well, let's take a look at how you look, man. Cause you fucking killed it. Me and Ian were doing the live commentary on Sunday morning. Yeah. And I did uh, it Sunday night with Seth. And then Sunday night, Ian did it with Seth. But I got to tell oh, you, yeah. I got to tell you, Martin, I did not expect this. When you walked out, I don't know if this is prejudging. I'm assuming it is. This yeah, is pre that, that's prejudging. Yeah. <clears throat> when you walked out, I looked at fucking Ian. I was like, "What the fuck?" And yeah, we then, were like, "How this guy's so <laughs> fucking round." We couldn't believe how like round you were, just like walking out. You know, the first that thing, the, the first thing it reminded me of, and I and some people are going to disagree. I know some people I've met, I've heard uh, Nick Strength and Power said Phil Heath. To me, the first person that came to mind was Dexter Jackson. I couldn't believe, like, just I the, love, I love that man. Both I, of those are like the biggest compliments ever. So, I, I mean, I'll take it. Either one is the, the, the man to me, bro. Um, I'll say know, this. So, Mar the, Martin, the Phil's, go ahead. Do you mind if I send him that picture I took of you so he can put it up here? Of course, of course. You know, the thing is, yeah. Martin. The reason I say Dexter for for people that are listening that maybe don't understand what i mean it's just the balance you know one of dexter's yeah. one of dexter's greatest attributes 
was the balance of all his muscle ba- muscles being perfectly proportionate with each yeah. other. The yeah. Ooh, and I just e- I just emailed you a photo. If you pull it up, it'll show exactly what we're saying. Like this is the craziest thing. Yeah. Um, this picture is dope. Ian took a the, really sick. This picture. is the sickest picture. Yeah. Yeah. It is. <laughs> and the, my camera guy got an awesome video of us bullshitting after prejudging Ian. It was really cool of Let's us see. just like talking about how you telling me like my time was coming. Yeah. Yeah. I cool. remember that conversation backstage there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so did you get the pick for it? Uh, yeah. I got it. I'm just going to put it up one second. So no, both of those are huge compliments, man. So I'll say this. I, so I was doing, I was in college sports in uh, 2016. And uh, I went and watched Phil guest pose. It was like four weeks after he'd won the Olympia. It was in uh, in Wyoming. So I go and watch him guest pose. And in that moment, I was taking a video of him. And I was like, I'm doing a show. Like, I don't care if I'm in college sports. Uh, I'll do it naturally. Like, I'm just, I'm going to do a show. I have to. Like, just seeing him in person was like, I have to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was so funny because that summer my college coach, my track coach called me and said like, Hey, I'm going to retire, man. I'm going to hand the reins over to so-and-so you're going to, they're going to be your new head coach. And I was like, you know what, actually, bye. I'm going to (laughs) go be a bodybuilder. And uh, so to get, to have it come full circle and people say the, the, you know, the comparisons of either one of those two is like the coolest thing in the world to me. So. Who did, uh, what did you do in track? I'm just curious. What did you, what did you? I threw shot put actually. I was, okay. uh, I was like the fat boy, but I was the, the smallest. Shit. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was a division one. Uh, I was the smallest division one shot putter in the nation. So it was like little five, seven, 200 pound Marty versus these like six, 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 six. Three, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> 300 pound dudes. It was so funny, man. I have so many like funny pictures of me standing next to like seven foot tall dude, <laughs> just yeah. like. Hi. <laughs> uh this is the picture Ian took. Quads look fucking just Dude. insane here. Such a sick pick, eh? That was um, a sick picture. And this yeah. is this is a video you sent me today, Martin. Yeah, so I guess we'll make the announcement on here, but I haven't told anyone. Um, but we're gonna do the New York Pro. So I wanted that to be uh Fuad's uh, present for ha- putting on a kick-ass show and stuff was for me to announce it on here but I, we want to keep keep going and uh and just see what we can do and uh you know i got an olympia qualification i got nothing to lose so i think it'd be awesome to go stand next to nick antonio and and see where i stand next to these guys that are top 10 in the world you know 100 percent. i decision. think um i think it's amazing that you're going to keep going i think uh I, I've said this to Ewers before and Samson because both of these guys are guys that can keep can take, you know compete in multiple shows a year. I think it's awesome. I think you're in shape. I think you go yeah. do the fucking show. Why not? Right. Show up, stand next to the guys who are like, you know, you get to stand next to Nick, Nick Walker. I'm like, yeah, one of the best you, in the world, man. You get to stand next to the guy who's in the top three at yeah. the Olympia and see how you stack up. And Why then not? <clears throat> Antonio was eighth. I mean, if you go there and you beat Tonio, that puts you in the top 10 at the Olympia like that. Yeah, so yeah, no, like, absolutely. I got nothing to lose. And the only thing we can do is collect more data. You know, this, like right. we were just talking, is like it's the first prep with Stefan. He's still learning my body. I, I told him, like, let's do this. And he was like, oh, perfect. Um, I already know how I can peak you better and how we can bring you in like more perfect and drier and harder. And we'll be 5% more conditioned because we can push a little deeper and dig into this a little harder. And mm-hmm. it'll be, it'll be fun to see, man, you know, just literally just keep enjoying the ride. This has been the funnest prep of my life and everything's coming together just perfectly. Brett and I's training has been like just as perfect as it can be. So we'll just keep lining up home run days and keep having fun, man. So I have a question for you. A little bit deeper mm-hmm. question, a little bit deeper question. Yeah. Uh, it seems like you've grown up a lot mentally along with physically. And that that's not meant as an insult at all. It's a, I mean, I mean it's uh, a, com- a compliment. It's the biggest compliment ever, man. No, I was, uh, I was your a personality is your personality is like done a 180 in the last like five years. So I'm just like, what are you, is Stefan part of that? Is that your own kind of like introspection? Like, what is it that has brought that about? 
Um, I, I think it's all of it, all, all of it combined together, man. Um, like I said, that was a big reason why I wanted to take time away from stage as well. You know, I like I wanted to grow up. I realized I was kind of a shithead kid and my life was kind of a mess. Like I was just trying to force everything, man. Like bodybuilding wasn't fun at that point in time. I was putting so much pressure on myself that I had to be the best. And if I didn't win this and this and this and and it was kind of like just it wasn't it was making it to where bodybuilding wasn't fun anymore for me sounds, you know this sounds familiar eh? um <laughs> <laughs> yeah no uh, in, in ian and i talked about this we, man, we had this I, conversation backstage yet yeah. well yeah, i think like i, I you think can, go ahead martin sorry you can see it in my physique and everything man like i'm just i'm overall just a happier person i'm in a perfect environment brett is a huge huge factor for why my mental health and stuff is better like he's the best big brother i could ever ask for man like he's in my corner he's uh he's always there for me and then stefan too man like he's uh he just makes this so much fun and he he brought the breathe the passion back into me uh that made me just why i fell in love with this like watching my body change every day and and having somebody believe in me the way that he believes in me is pretty cool. So Urs, is that something you go through as well? Like how I noticed that every bodybuilder, including myself, goes through this period where they're trying to get better. They're trying to get better. They're doing better, better, better. And then they kind of hit this point where they're like, they're trying to push to be better so badly that it almost goes in reverse for them. This happened to me in like 2013, 2014, before I met John. So like, mm -hmm. or does that happen to you? Because you seem to be taking all of it in stride as you go, even though, I mean, you've done exceptionally well, but even though you're not like the last couple of years, you've been stagnant. Is it, are you still feeling incredible? Are you feeling happy? Or is there a point where you're like, I need to re re look at this at things. Overall, I would say I'm feel incredible, happy. And, uh, I enjoy training at, especially after this like loss i can say at the last two hours yeah, I mean, we did yeah um that got my i mean i got fired up so much you know um <laughs> it's crazy because now the fire is the fire was there before but now it's like on a totally different level and i love to like sending stefan every every <laughs> um like every three four days that's how and i we, feel too oh we we just talked that's about how I, feel. I was like the past two years i was like yeah it's off season <laughs> is that just me or is that everybody are we losing him yeah we're losing him losing him a bit i lost you a bit Urs. The sound, the sound went, yeah. Shit. All right, okay. We'll have to try and get you back. Let me know when you come back. Log off and come back on. Definitely. Are you are you there yet? Say something. Darn it. <laughs> yeah, just 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 get off and come back on. Yeah, if you log off and log back on, it should be okay. So Ian, I'll, I'll go to you since you've ex experienced this. Is there, is there any way for a bodybuilder to avoid that pitfall of like pushing so hard that they kind of start to ruin it for themselves? I mean, I think I'm sure there is ways to avoid it. Um, you know, and I think there's so many different personalities and, you know, people and they, you know, react to these situations differently and their motivations are different. Their expectations are different. Um, you know, like I, I, I know that there's guys that, you know, view these things differently. Um, so, so it's hard to say, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure there is ways to avoid it. Do I know what they are? No. Cause I'm I saying, guess, I, guess I, encounter, question... I encountered it and I didn't do too good with it, but I learned a lot on the back end of it, you know? So One at second. the time when I encountered it, I, it was very hard for me. Um, but you know, I think, I mean, especially after stepping away from the stage now, like, and looking back, it definitely gives you a lot of perspective on that time for sure. Yeah. So I guess a better question would be if you find yourself, Martin said it too, if you find yourself in that phase where you're like, fuck, I'm just not happy anymore. I'm not enjoying, yeah. I'm, I'm not enjoying why I started this shit in the first place. Yeah. If you get to that place. Yeah. 
how did you both get out of it? Because well, I, I, I think guess the big, the biggest thing is just to like, like, you know, for me, it was is reassessing why I was doing this. Is, is you know, and, and I think sometimes you lose sight of like, you know, and, and I think sometimes you lose whoop. sight of like, what's going on there? I think that's Urz's, <laughs> Urz's computer. <laughs> I got like such reverb there on my on my voice. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just you know reminding myself of like, okay, when you started bodybuilding, what did you start this for? It's because you love the training, you love the challenge, you know, you loved manipulating your body and seeing what you could do with it. You know, you loved this, this, this challenge that comes along with it. And when I got to a point where I didn't love the challenge, you know, I really had to look and like remind myself of like, what am I, what am I so worried about here? Like I was so wrapped up in everything being so, so under so much pressure and so important. Like everything was so hyper fixated on importance that I'd like completely forgot of like why I actually love doing this. You know, do you think, <laughs> Do you think we would feel that way if it wasn't for social media? Like imagine going back as a bodybuilder and being like, there's just magazines because uh, Tyler said something interesting this weekend or Jack, I can't remember which one they were talking about older bodybuilders and they were like expressing how that older body, the older generations didn't have to deal with social media because if you did get critiqued, it was usually in a magazine. It was usually constructive it was six and, months later. And it was three months after the contest. Yeah. So your mental yeah. state was like calm. Yeah. Whereas, whereas now you're critiqued immediately and it's not always constructive and it's by hundreds or thousands of people. Yeah, no, I definitely think it has an impact. And, and for anyone that hasn't, I'll give them a little plug on it is that hasn't watched Phil Heath's documentary. I would, I would definitely go watch it. Cause he actually yes. touches on that. He actually touches on this, at, you know, because Phil was the first guy. He was yeah. literally the first Mr. Olympia to encounter this at all. You know, yeah. Jay didn't have any of the social media um, when he was, you know, at his reign. And Phil really was the first guy when he started winning, you know, that stepped into that social media era as as the Olympia champion, you know. And he talks about his, you know, trials and tribulations that kind of came alongside that. And it's actually a very, you know, for anyone in the bodybuilding industry that struggled with that. Um, I definitely think it's something that you can listen to and be like, man, this isn't just me. This extrapolates right to the guys at the very top. And um, and everyone in between, you know? So, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely think it plays a role for sure. I mean, especially with us in the fitness industry, we're so, you know, interlaced into the social media world, which is kind of separate from, separate. you know, a lot of other professional sports, you know, you go to the NBA or the NFL or these, like, you know, these guys aren't like paying attention to that stuff as much, but their contracts aren't as contingent on being active on social media and their contracts aren't with, you know, posting on social media, um, in the same regards that we are. Right. So, we're mm -hmm. so intertwined with it. So it definitely makes it hard. Yeah. Yeah. So no, Martin, absolutely. Martin, mm -hmm. I want to show uh I think before we go on, actually, I just want to say thank you to Urs for coming on. Yeah. I think I think he said he only had an hour, so maybe his okay. Yeah. Maybe his computer knew he had to go. <laughs> um but Martin, I'm gonna go back to these shots because some of these are pretty it's fucking pretty awesome. This one Oh, Cooper got some crazy shots, man. Alex Cooper, yeah. uh great photographer. This one is really fucking cool. Yeah, it's yeah, such a that's my boy Cree. Yeah, so I, I, this was my photographer that came with me, and he he had some dope ideas, man. This was cool. He was like, I want to get one of you walking away with all your hardware, and um, you know that one just screams the pure emotion that was felt. You know that that's a that was a few years coming of just wanting a pro win real bad. <laughs> yeah, and then this so, one, I love this one. Yeah. With it's, a, we had the backdrop backstage. Uh, that was Coop, that was Cooper again, man. He's a yeah. he's a he's a shooter behind the lens there. He's got some yeah. dope shots. Man. So yeah. you came no, in a little, a little harder at night, I think, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, I was down about a pound, I think, in between, and we just we we got substantially harder. We want that's what we wanted to do. We knew coming into pre judging, we kind of wanted to bring that like fill exploding fullness and know that they were going to pose as hard and that I would get harder as I posed the whole time, mm -hmm. um, which is pretty much what happened, you know, with prejudging. I felt like we just, as they worked us, I just got harder and harder, um, which was nice. And then for finals, I was like, all right, now, like we slammed the door and Stefan was like, yep, like now we get dry. Um, yeah. So that's what we did. And and then that really was like what slammed, slammed the door and, and finished it off and got the win for us, you know? So that was, uh, it was cool to watch him work too. And, and how that, 
when you know just watching my body clean up at the end yeah. and, and get improving you know so let me ask you so the judges were split i personally thought it was a little bit more only clear. in pre only in pre-judge though let me yeah okay so me and ian sat at, at, at pre-judge i'm just gonna use i'm just gonna go by my own uh vision for what i saw i thought it was very clear the balance is kind of what made the difference and the posing mm -hmm. um regardless of what i thought though and regardless of anything my question is seeing some of the commentary online about it being split does that bother you at all or are you just like roll with it because it's that's what the that's what competing is yeah i mean some of it you have to know is like the the judges want want that too is like they right. want people to not actually know who's going to win like i mean unless you're a phil heath home run 2012 walk off home run like yeah. bodybuilding is more interesting when you don't yeah. know who's going to take the trophy home right right um i was honestly after pre-judging i have an interview from my cameraman he asked me like how do you feel and i said like I'm going to be honest. I, I truly think that I got my first pro win here. Like, I think that I just, okay. I was, I was more poised. I was better at posing. Um, and I think that those things were the things that really just edged out the detail there. And then I knew that, to, that, that at the night show that we could come back drier, harder, better. I always do that. Um, that's kind of my signature thing in bodybuilding is like, I've always come back to finals better. Mm -hmm. um uh, i feel like that's one thing that i've always loved about phil too was like him being mr saturday night uh was always the dopest thing ever you know it's like friday he he never he sometimes left the door open for kai and then on saturday he slammed it in his face and i i just i loved that so that was like i i told stefan like you can see and people made some comparisons of just even how prejudging to finals how much we change my body and and that was it was cool to see man and, and really finish things off there and then at finals i knew for sure that uh i had taken it home i really felt that way for sure after okay. we dried up and cleaned up because my posing and everything was just that much more cleaner and crisper um in that in those comparisons you know i could hold my vacuum longer um the one thing about being that full was that it makes posing hard you know you guys know is like when you just when you're like bursting at the seams it's like sometimes holding your breath and stuff gets hard. So um, it was it was nice to clean up a little bit. And it was like just enough to make it where like every pose felt crisp. I yeah. could hold it as long as they wanted me to hold it. Um, you know, there was no sweat or anything like that because it was just like it was there. You know, it was it, everything was on point. Urs, how many shows have you won now? Uh, seven. Seven yeah. fucking hey. shows. How old are you? 25 now, yeah. <laughs> motherfucker seven shows okay so yeah. are you ahead of ian now i got you know? six you guys so he's got, uh, did they count though because it's classic does yeah it's classic does count. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> i mean divided all <laughs> or as i was listening to you speak earlier about how quickly your body changes with food and stuff you know what that all points to right mm -hmm. you should just be in the open yeah. Oh. <laughs> your body's you know, trying to grow and you're stopping it wants to be 300 pounds yeah you know marcus rule pushed me into it into it and now it became a meme here in all germany because my my girlfriend alicia said like um he's not going to do open and then everybody of the community is now asking her can Urs go open please please <laughs> make him go open <laughs> Is she yes. like memes with Marcus Rule and her? Um, <laughs> Marcus also says go to open, but I well, mean, it honestly looks like it seems like your body is like waiting for it. But for all the, those classic top, I would say top five, top six athletes, I mean, Chris's body also waiting for open. Ramon's no, body is no, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. For it's Ramon. Not the I don't I don't feel like it's the same. I feel like look, I'm not I think Ramon, but I'm not, not Chris. I'm not saying they can't go open. I'm not saying they wouldn't be great open guys. But I saw you last off season and I was like, this is a fucking this guy's an open class bodybuilder. Like it didn't even look like you. So I'm like, you know, that's that's kind of where I get it from. So we will see. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. but then gonna... I saw guys like Ian on fucking stage and I said like not in a 
not in 10 years I'm gonna be good enough for to compare myself with those guys so I trained with Hassan in Canada and yeah. I just saw muscles everywhere and I was like no fucking way maybe I have some good lines and some yeah. good Hassan, Hassan will demotivate the biggest pro bodybuilder <laughs> yeah. in the world though you see this guy like in the gym oh. train you're like what the fuck I have no yeah. idea what I'm doing do I Yep. Like he is so goddamn big. Like, even if you're an Olympia top 10 guy, he's bigger than almost everybody. So, like, that's a bad example. <laughs> yeah. Uh, true. So, next year. So, Martin, without me being the promoter for a second, just pretend. <laughs> how, is De- how is Detroit? And if you, and actually, constructive criticism would be nice. If there's yeah. any, if there's anything you could change about it, what would you change? If there was anything I could change about it. Yeah, Honestly, it's... man, like as far as the show goes and shit, like it was ran like like the most jam up thing. Like you guys home run it really. Like okay. I mean, the the one criticism I had was that like my music didn't turn on during my forty five second. Okay, routine. you talked about this. You know? <laughs> and, and and like literally, uh, I was telling Ian backstage is like, if it was any anyone else, maybe it would have yeah. bothered them. Yeah. But honestly, I was like, fuck yeah. Because when I was hitting shots, the crowd's going wild. I'm like, you were standing up there. I must look good. Like, again, plug in the Phil Heath documentary, but Phil in the documentary is like, Arnold told me that, like, when you're in it and the crowd goes crazy, stay in it. And if if you're in it and they don't, get out of it. And it was like, when I hit my back shot, it was no music and the whole place went insane. And it was like, yeah. well, it must look pretty good. It must, it must be there. Well, you I, know? you know, sometimes that works out for guys. I've seen that happen a multiple, multiple amount of times in bodybuilding where like the music won't play. And yeah. then a guy and the guy will hit like a front double or something. And the crowd is just, it's cool to see sometimes. So, yeah. but that being said, we got a little bit screwed on our DJ the last minute. So we had to bring in a ringer. Yeah, that's so, what Paul so told me. I so. uh, I take <laughs> I totally understand. You know, we eat we'll we'll eat that one. That was hundred percent on us. Um, but yeah, the DJ next year will be back to normal. Um yeah. no, but, you know, no, I'm, David Getta to be killed killed David Getta is gonna be doing <laughs> yeah. <laughs> David Getta is gonna be doing um, it. No, but um well I'm glad you said that, Martin. I'm, I look, we we aim to make sure the competitors are happy first, but next year, Ian. Uh, me and Ben and Paul talked, and uh, me and Urs were talking before you guys got on. I think we're going to add classic. Hey, nice. So, nice. We talked so. about that too in the car. Yeah. We can get uh maybe we can get Chris to come uh, yeah. <laughs> to come after the Olympia and do the do yeah. Detroit. <laughs> yeah, Chris, Urs, and Ramon to get back there. You know, have the yeah, mini yeah, yeah. there again. Yeah, but or, but oh. Urs said he won't do it unless it's twenty grand prize money. Yeah, because okay. you got to fork up the cash, homie. Fuck man, you guys are <laughs> you guys are pretty demanding. Yeah, fifty to the open, twenty to the classic. There you go. You picked a good Damn. one. To do. You picked a good yeah. one to do, Martin. We fucking killer, jack yeah. jack that shit up for you. Oh yeah, man. On it, like I mean, it killed what, it, bro. What, like it was. I couldn't have asked for a better, what like you, a better pro win to be. What did you say, or, or, or what did you say? What are you gonna buy, Martin, from the, the yeah. 20- Curious. Yeah, I'm gonna keep prepping, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go back into bodybuilding. That's you know? an investment back and into I, prep. Yeah. I gotta yeah. tell people. I gotta tell people quickly. Backstage, or is when Martin walked off stage after winning. He's holding this twenty five thousand dollar check and this trophy, and his gym bag, whatever we gave him. And he walked off stage all excited. And I pulled him aside, like right, right as soon as he got off the stage. And I said, Martin, I'm sorry, man. I'm like, we don't have the money to pay you. We're gonna. We have to give you less. And he was like, "Oh, it, it's okay, man." And I'm, like, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but he was so. But he was so good about it. He was like, gonna totally like, it was gonna be okay. Like he yeah. wasn't bad. It's, but it's, I think as an athlete, you don't even think about this fucking money. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It's true. Wow. It's true. Wow. Weeks that, after, that's... you're like, mm, ah, okay, I want some money. Ah, nice. Good to have it. Yeah, you think about it after. You don't think but about I it like happy when about this fucking jacket my whole life than about the <laughs> yeah. I got at the Olympia. I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. So, Martin, no, I mean, go ahead. A- after afterwards, you know, like it's cool to think back and be like, damn, like I I put a, a good check in the bank this weekend and stuff, you know, and, the, and that's, uh, you know, it's in hindsight, it's awesome, but yeah, in the moment, like money was definitely not on my mind you know it's just like the you know qualifying for your first olympia and just soaking in the moment and 
and like just really appreciating like all of it you know like it, it was the uh, so far it's the best moment of my life so it was, it was awesome Fouad, and thank you for that's that awesome. you know i appreciate that's, it so that's great to hear so moving forward before we wrap up today you're going to go to new york and yep. you have nick walker who's a potential mr olympia you have quint who looks like he's doubled in size yeah uh, yeah you have tonio who's already a top 10 olympian and you have Stu who's yeah. been shredded already Very for good. like for two weeks so who knows yeah. how freaky he's gonna look i'm sure there's a bunch of other great guys i just don't haven't seen the lineup but even with those four guys how do you feel going into the show do you think you can knock out tonio quint do you think you can stand next to nick and compare like or are you not thinking of any of that you're just like i just want to show up at my best i i, I truly think that i can stand with nick and compare in some shots you know Okay. Um, I think that I can r truly get a lot better in between here. And that's what like the main focus is, is like us learning more about my body and, and being able to bring a better improved look. So, you know, we, you know, Stefan and I talked and I think we can be five to 7% deeper dugout conditioning, um, and then still bring that exploding fullness, which will just look even crazier with better, deeper conditioning, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, and I, I got some posing feedback and stuff from Tyler on what they want to see from me there. So we can bring that to them and show them that I improved and took their advice and fix those small little tweaks that they want to see. Mm -hmm. Um, and then it also gives me a good gauge on what I need to go and work on for the Olympia coming up here by being able to stand next to these guys that are top 10, you know, in the world. So what's after, so Martin, I didn't know this about you, but are you genetically like a leaner guy? Like, do you have a hard time yeah. dieting or it seems, so you diet, dieting is pretty easy for you. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoy dieting, man. Like I, I love dieting. Honestly. Okay. So oh, that's so wild to hear. I can't even like, I love that. Too. I can't even comprehend I'm the same as Martin. Yeah. I can't even comprehend that. I'm like, I hate dieting more than more than anything <laughs> no, on earth. Yeah, I would way rather, yeah, I would way rather starve than eat like a fat boy. Me and Ur, me and Urza are like, where's the fucking cookies? Yep. <laughs> yep. I, okay, I hate so, eating. I'd rather be hungry. Yeah. So, same, same. so Martin, in saying that, after New York, you have a couple smaller shows in California, Toronto. I think Chicago is a little bit further away after that, but. Is there any chance you would continue and go on and do a couple of those smaller shows just to collect more checks? Um, so they're like, if I wouldn't have the qualification and I don't have other things coming up, I probably would. Mm -hmm. Um, but with Brett getting ready, getting ready to do something soon, I want to be able to give him my all and focus on him as well as I need to shut things down after New York, get, get health perfect. So yeah. that way I can do a nice long, uh, like kind of off season slash into a prep into the Olympia to bring sure. a much improved physique. You know, um, I, I want to make sure that when we get there, I've improved in every aspect and and bring a new physique again and kind of hopefully shock people again. You know, um, you I know you're not going to win your first one, but that's why we want to come out and just have a, a beautiful presentation, perfect physique and and make people kind of you know think in the back of their heads okay he's gonna do something in the in the future to come so what's uh or can you tell us what brett's doing um <laughs> you, it, we have are you allowed <laughs> <laughs> i i'm not well i'm not quite sure yet like it's gonna be around the tampa time okay. frame somewhere yeah. close to that yeah um we're we're just still pushing him up right now and then you know and then we got to make sure that everything's in check for him to be able to start a prep but it, it'll probably be around that time frame. If we have to go overseas, um, we will. And we'll just, uh, you know, the, the main thing is, is that we get him qualified now so that we can do our first one together. You know, he missed out on the opportunity last year. Uh, but I think that was God's plan for us to be able to do the first one together. Um, yeah. And I think, I think uh, we'll, we'll get it done. So I'll make sure that I push him and kick his ass every day. Uh, to make sure that he's his grade A best whenever we do do something. Uh, but it'll be a fun run for us both. And and that'll just give me an opportunity. You know, I'll be in the in an off season slash, you know, getting ready for pushing into a prep for the Olympia. So I'll just make sure yeah. that I'm training my hardest and, and doing my best to uh, get progressed in every way that I can as well. Okay. 
Awesome. Urs, anything you want to say before we go? You seem pretty mm -hmm. quiet today. Are you tired? Are you tired? I killed my leg, so yes, I am tired. But <laughs> oh, I wanted to listen to Martin because, I mean, he won your show. And, uh, yeah, it's interesting to to listen what yeah what was his experience and everything so um nothing more to add i'm still focusing on the olympia but i'm gonna be in in pits i'm gonna be rooting for my boy martin at the new york show so um yeah can't wait to be in the states again get some good sessions in maybe ian kills me in uh, in the training or something every train yeah never know but the last last training we did was like the <laughs> Two days from the Olympia. Yeah. <laughs> leg day with Patrick. Yeah. And it was also pretty nice. So, yeah. Um, or is, are you going to go on another, like, uh, another tour where you train with a whole bunch of people that you're going to compete against? I would love, <laughs> honestly. Really? About it. Yeah. Why not? Well, but I've trained with all of them, but I would love to go to Brazil again just because, yeah, training is so different over there and they treat the athletes crazy with all the trainers and all the support system they got over there but yeah uh beside well, that we need to see what's going on you should come I, by the come by the house as well. what'd you say <laughs> ibiza is calling as well so <laughs> <laughs> we will see no just kidding i mean i'm always open up to to visit some guys and train with them um but yeah Ian, anything you want to say before we go no, I mean, obviously, congratulations to Martin. I mean, that was, you know, huge. Get your first pro win is 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 huge, and that was well-deserved. And I was happy that I was, you know, there to be, to witness it firsthand, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so super excited. I mean, ho you know, hopefully we can, we'll be down there in Pittsburgh as well. We'll see uh, where's get on stage and maybe even, you know, go to New York and watch Martin slug it out with Nick and the other guys there too, so. Yeah, um, are you, you're, where are you at right now, Martin? Where are you living? I just moved. I just moved to Florida, man. I, uh, okay. About eight, eight weeks out from this show, I got down here. I stayed with Brett. Um, I finally got a place about four weeks out from the show, yeah. and uh, and now I'm here for for a good year at least. So okay. now I'll be here training every day with Brett and just lining up home runs. Like I said, just hopefully just put them all together and line it up for a good one. So all right. Well, Ooh, Martin, Stuart, right? what's that, Urs? Jim Stewart, right? When you train at Rivera. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah. I'm actually, where, I'm in Jensen Beach, but it's just like literally up the road, so. Well, I'll see you soon too. I'll be down for the Raw Gym opening at the end of May as well, so I'll be down there. Oh, yeah. Uh, end of May, so yeah. I'll be down. Maybe we can catch a lift or something down there. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's definitely yeah. do it. Ian, I don't like this microphone thing. Don't do it again. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> what? Why don't you like it? <laughs> all right boys listen, i'm sure i sound so much better though you sound so much better it's not even yeah. funny okay right. thank you guys very much urs thank you thank for the, you. the last minute notice martin congratulations again thank you for coming on absolutely and, thanks uh, for having me brother we'll do it again ian i'll see you soon go fuck yourself yeah. fuck you too bye <laughs> <laughs> peace bye guys